What did you make of Diego Coca being fired after the Nations League loss to the U.S. and finishing third overall? I think we have to say, call it how as it is. The players got him fired, and and what happened there is that the, the new president Juan Carlos Rodriguez uh, had a meeting with the players in Las Vegas, and this was after reports came out uh, that the players weren't happy with the logistics of the tournament. They were staying outside of Las Vegas, about 40 minutes away from Vegas. Uh, there were reports of training being about like four-hour training sessions <laughs> under the sun, and then obviously before the after the U.S. game. Uh, there was a there was a public meeting uh, that the, that Coca confirmed, there were the players said, hey, we need to play more attacking football. And so, uh, after the fact, Juan Carlos Rodriguez, the president, meets with the players. They complain, and he's out. And so, the, as they say, you know, the, the players did what they had to do to get the the, play, the the coach fired. I think that's that's the bottom line. But really, as you can see in in, in the in the in the intro. It is a crisis. Uh, they were handled by the United States. Juan Carlos Rodriguez, in his video message, said, "You know, we can lose to the U.S. It's it's football. You know, it's a risk that we have to accept, but we can't lose like that." And 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 clearly, the embarrassment of being thrashed three nil, and then following up with almost an empty stadium in the third place game, and that was the, a message from the fans. Where essentially hitting the, the federation where it hurts most on the bottom line. All those things came together and Coca just wasn't given time. And so uh, it, it's it's an interesting, I think, dilemma for Mexico to think who comes next? Who wants this job if a player, if a coach after seven games is out? Felipe, I'm glad you went there because it seems like it can be any coach with the dysfunction that lies behind the scenes with the Mexican federation. So can you just shed a bit of light on exactly what the problems are in the federation from a systemic level? Yeah, I mean, I think if you go back just most recently, again, in the summer of 2021, that almost the entire sporting department was fired after a series of failures on the pitch. The, the, the U-20 men didn't get out of CONCACAF qualifying for their World Cup. They missed out on the Olympics as well. The women failed to, to qualify for the World Cup. They failed to qualify for the Olympics as well. And then at the time, the, the men's senior men's team was struggling uh, in qualifying with, with Tata Martino being essentially, you know, victimized as as the reason why. I think we now we know it's not the coach's fault. But I think the biggest problem in Mexico and the federation is the 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 influence that the most powerful owners in Mexico have. They're the ones choosing the the the, the executives within the federation. They're they're, they're the ones. They're, they're the ones. Uh, there's my cat. There's my cat. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're the ones choosing the coach. There was a committee of owners that got together and chose Diego Coca. And there was, a, a, at one point, one faction of, of owners wanted Marcelo Bielsa. Another faction of owners wanted Diego Coca. Another one wanted Guillermo Almada, who's coaching Pachuca. They couldn't come to an agreement. And, and Coca gets hired. And he's a coach that, yes, he won back-to-back -back titles with Atlas. Uh, but no international experience. And so to your point, Mateo, that, that's it. You have the wrong decision makers making these big decisions uh, and they're doing short term hires. And that's never going to help for continuity at all. Felipe, we look at, uh, you know, we look at the federation, we look at the coaches. But uh, what about the players? When I look at the U.S. men's national team, I look at that roster and I say, I say, OK, there's a lot of star power and they have to accomplish a certain level. Right. When I look at the Mexican uh, roster, I, maybe I don't see that. Do you think there's enough quality there, enough star power there in general, even if they had everything else right? Do they just do they have what it takes on the roster alone to, to, to be good? N not presently. I think if you look at the, the roster, their, their star player is Guillermo Ochoa, you know, 37, 38 years old. And then Edson Alvarez, who's very good, a very good uh, holding midfielder for Ajax and, and, and rumored to be on his way to Borussia Dortmund, a very good player. But that, that's your star, you know, the holding midfielder. Uh, everyone else has has struggled. Santi Jimenez is, is is a totally different player when he puts on the, the Mexico shirt, seems to shrink a little bit, honestly. Uh, and, and the problem is, and to, to your point, uh, Grella, one of the conversations that the players had with Coca after the U.S. game was like, we need to play our younger players. We need to get the guys that are dynamic, that are sitting on the bench, that want to dribble at somebody, that are a little bit more fearless than our veterans, get them on the pitch. Uh, and that's been a huge problem in Mexico. And that's not just at the national team level. That is an issue that everyone sort of cites, even at the league level, is that it's very difficult 
for young Mexican players to, to get into a starting 11 in Liga MX. It's, it's a league that is now dominated by foreign players. And so as far as the, the talent goes, it's, it's, it's struggling. And I remember speaking to people close to Tata Martino's camp before the World Cup. I remember someone told me, Tata's going to have to get creative here because this was after they they had faced the U.S. in the qualifying and they realized this team, this U.S. team is way faster than us, way more athletic. And honestly, they smell blood. And that that's that's another big fear in Mexico that they think everyone in the region just, you know, they, they think they can beat them, whether they're playing at the Azteca or playing away. Now, Felipe, we know confidence in the Mexico camp is, is at all time lows. Uh, in your report yesterday, you mentioned that some uh, or several of the Mexico players uh, stated that they might not want to play in the Gold Cup. Joan Vasquez specifically wanted to maybe go back to Genoa in Italy. What is the prognosis for Gold Cup? What is what is the belief in the, the Mexico camp that they can get any sort of result in this tournament? Yeah, well, the rosters are finalized. They were released, I believe, late yesterday. And if you look at the Mexico roster, it's very similar to Nations League. Johan Vasquez, who you mentioned, was not on it, though. Uh, and so that's interesting. He was one of the players that went public and said, you know, I haven't given, gotten my chance with the national team. You know, under Martino as well, he wasn't, you know, he didn't play much. And he mentioned that there's a new coach at Genoa. He wanted to get out there and impress him. And impress him. But that's another issue here. You know, and, and that's what Juan Carlos Rodriguez, the president, mentioned. You know, how, what, how are players jumping ship in the middle of a tournament? Uh, that, that can't stand. And, and that's something that no coach, I, sh I think, should, should ever actually stand for as well. And, and, and clearly, Diego Coca wasn't able to do that. But the, the Gold Cup roster is, is a strong Mexico roster. It honestly is. It should be one that can win the tournament. And, and, that, and that's, that just puts additional pressure on. I mentioned Edson Alvarez. He's on, the, he's on the roster. Guillermo Ochoa, he's on the roster. So it's not like they just completely flipped it to a Liga MX roster. It's one that in Mexico they expect to challenge for the title. I think now the, the problem is the mentality of the team is completely you know, underground. And, and as you, if you saw Jamaica's roster, they came with a, a Premier League roster. They, they're going for the tournament. And the U.S., even though they flip theirs, they know that they can win a tournament with essentially their, their, their B side with an MLS heavy team. And so Mexico under immense pressure to get this done. And Jaime Lozano, the guy that steps in to, for, for Diego Coca, respected with the young players, took a young team to the Olympics, won bronze. And so he will, I think he's auditioning for a job here. And honestly, my, that was what I reported yesterday. I think he should just get the full-time job, get the, get a Mexican in there that understands the culture, can get to the players, uh, <coughs> can get inside their heads and get this team forward.